standing by. And they're off for the 2023 Betfred Derby. King of Steel got away all right from the stalls. Adelaide River forward on the outside. Arrest going forward from a wide position as well with Passenger very prominent as they race up the hill in the early stages. Out uh, wide then uh, is Military Order just towards the outside from San Antonio. Artistic star Passenger in the firing line. Dubai Marlin getting across now is Arrest. Uh, back in the field to King of Steel then Spreewell and then towards the rear then August Rodan is towards the outside dear my friend up the inside Waipiro White Birch is uh, just about the back marker as they now move across to the inside of the track and Adelaide River just getting across now in front of San Antonio the uh, two stable companions followed by Dubai Mile then passenger close up arrest has got a good position from a wide draw Frankie de Torre in the pink cap they're followed then by military order Spreewell on the inside is King of Steel followed by Dear my friend August Rodan probably got about four behind him. Artistic star, the Fox is held up, White Birch and White Piro. Reaching the highest point on the race course now and about to swing on, tumbling down towards Chatham Corner. And it's Adelaide River from stable companion San Antonio. They are one and two. Arrest in a fine position, just three off the rail in third place, followed then by Passenger. On the inside, the White Blaze Dubai Mile. They're followed by Military Order, also in a good position from then uh, Spreewell. King of Steel, the inside. White Piro trying to make up ground outside the Foxes from Dear My Friend. They're just behind all Gus Rodan packing field and then towards the rear artistics statistic uh, star and finally white birch as they now swing into tatnam corner with about four furlongs left to cover in the betfred derby and it's san antonio and adelaide river still going stride for stride into third is a rest with every chance dubai mile on the inside will have to go for a daring run there king of steel is running on well with passenger then out wide here comes august rodan in the hands of ryan moore beginning to burn down the outside from the foxes in behind these passenger arrest is weakening it's king of steel that's come through to take it up king of steel in the hands of kevin stott chased now by august rodan as they run down to the final furlong they appear to have it between them the big horse king of steel august rodan is thrusting down the near side august rodan beginning to get up and august rodan gains redemption in the derby August Rodan, a ninth derby for Aidan O'Brien, a third for Ryan Moore. War down, King of Steel, what a run in second. White Birch back in third. Well, the 2023 Betfred derby has been run successfully in unusual circumstances, but we're very familiar with the trainer who's won it. Aidan O'Brien has won a ninth derby with August Rodan. Congratulations. You were so adamant that this horse was brilliant and you couldn't have you know, the doubters after the 2,000 guineas. Can you explain why you had that bedrock of certainty? Yeah. Yeah, no, I suppose, Lydia, it's unusual with this horse. Like, uh, from the very start, when John decided, and John and Sue, and everyone decided to send her to Japan, uh, for her, or, like a maiden mare to send all the way to Japan to be covered by Deep Impact. Like, it was an unbelievable call. And then when she was scanned to be in fold to a colt, and, and then all the height of expectations was straight away from this poor foal since he was born and he was measured 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 all the way and and all the measurements he was hitting the top all the way and it's very difficult on a person or a horse to handle all that hype but he did all the way through before he came to Ballydile and then when he came to Ballydile in February I remember Ryan sitting on him in February as a two-year-old and he said this is very special and then it all just rose even higher and then um, he, he, he had a lovely run first time and then he won his next two and uh, then won his next three and then he was put away and the plan was for the guineas and uh, two days before the guineas like we always felt the guineas was going to be his toughest assignment uh, but when that happens everything has to fall right for you the things that you can't control have to fall in place for you but two days before the guineas they all started falling the other way where his flight was cancelled he had to go the day before instead of the morning and and then everything was ground and all the circumstances just fell against him that we couldn't control so really we felt it was just a non-event um, and then i suppose when, when we said that it obviously heap more pressure onto the horse and everybody around him that was looking after him so and obviously we had to keep the faith um, 
but then it was down to the acid test here today and like really coming here today <laughs> like it's so much of these things that they, they, they don't happen and, and like we felt he was the most special horse we've ever had at Liddy because he was out with a, the great, one of the best Galileo mares by the greatest Japanese stallion and he had the movement he, and, and he, he doesn't look a big horse but when you stand into him he's a, he's a big horse so it, it's usually a sign of something different and then in all fairness to Ryan we gave him no instructions I, I spoke to Ryan on the way in the car and he said listen Aidan I'm going to ride him on field and he, and that's what he did like the, we maybe would have preferred a stronger pace from the pace was slow uh, he, he, Ryan was back a good bit but like so he had to cope with a lot like usually if you're taking your time when the pace is strong the pace comes back to you but he had to go chase the pace and then Ryan said when he chased it he said he, he felt he was getting there too early and then he had to go again you know so it's incredible really it's it's um Listen, uh, uh, Lydia, it's, it's, it's incredible, but it, it, for me it all starts with John, where he, he, where he sent the horse to the mayor, and then it, it, he went through all his brackets all the way, and all his measurements, and all the reports, and, and then all... Listen, it's, it's, it's such a big team, like, like I say, for John and Sue and all their family, Michael and Dory and all his family, Derek and Gay and all their family, and Paul and George and Emily and all their family, and they're all so involved, uh, Lydia, I can't tell you. And then there's everyone at home, there's John with his team of vets, Andrew's in charge of him, Rachel rides him out, Wayne rides him in his work, Killian rides, makes the pace for his work, Martin rides, Rach, takes the lead horse for K uh, Rachel every day, and then there's John on the farm, John in the office, Chris, Jenny, there's so many people, and I'm forgetting to, to say a lot of people, uh, and all the people around, and all the people in Coolmore who brought him all the way along the step, the people that do his stable in the morning, and listen, it's such a team, I, I can't, I can't uh, explain to you about it, uh, um, uh, really a lady, you know. I mean, so. it, it's clearly such a team effort. Yeah. We see that in terms of how well oiled the team is and how, how prepared it is. But it's your name on the license. And it sounds to me, in the early part of what you were saying there, is that you were allowing that you felt a little bit of pressure with this horse. Oh, no, listen, I did, uh, Lydia. And listen, obviously, I'm re sorry, I'm re came over with me. And, and obviously, usually these days, you only go the one way. And, and usually the more you want them to happen, the usually they go the other way. So, and, and we, we knew there was an awful lot of things could fall against them today. Like there was a lot of things could have happened. There was a lot of things out there going to control. And I think for everybody here in Epsom, the way they controlled everything, they controlled the crowd, they controlled all the things that could happen. Like I, I think it was, there were so many variables that people were trying to control that could get out of control, you know, yeah. so. That must have given you an extra layer of worry, must yeah, have well, listen, for, for us it was the same for us all. So we all had to deal with it. But for everyone here, and, like it was, there was so much stuff going on, uh, like underneath, mm. and and like uh, we only know the half of what happened this morning before the racing started. What everyone had to do and everyone had to be kept in order and in line and just to try and make it happen. Like and listen, the ground and the way it changed and you know there was so many things, the lady, you know. But for us, when it happens, we're just so grateful and I'm so grateful for the lads. But they 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 put all the money in. They supply all to have the horses and to keep everyone in jobs and the spin-off is unbelievable you know what I mean so listen I'm just so, so delighted for everyone you, you, really. are, you are palpably delighted you've explained the the breeding of a yes. Dam. Yes. so is this going to be is this a very important horse for Coolmore I'd say he's probably the most important horse ever why he, because he's, he's by uh, he's out of uh, Rosadendrum who was one of the best if not one of the best Galileo mares and he's by the best Japanese stallion probably ever so it's it's and, and we know what's after happening to Japanese breeding and and we know about our, our own breeding and it's after connecting the two of them together and and this horse has everything he has temperament he has movement he ha, he can he breeds he's he has he's everything he's a personality you know he, he's probably the most important horse we've ever had I'd say because he's bringing the two continents together you know and and the, listen and it's not fake ability it's pure ability you know so um, I, I think it's so exciting really and Ryan was saying that you were looking at Sunday Silence as well and looking at the similarity we, of Mark. We, we were looking, myself and Ryan were looking at Sunday Silence and he's the very same as him. And then, and then he, 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 he's like his dad, where he likes to be taking his time, he likes to come at horses because he has a lot of speed, but he will be better when the pace is fast for him. You know, but it's, it's hard to believe when you look at him and look at Sunday Silence, he's the very same as him. You know, and we were looking at the other night and it was hard to believe that you weren't looking at Augustus Rodin and the movement and everything, the way he, he, he carries himself and the quickening and like it's incredible really, you know, so and, and Rosa Dendrum, like how special was she? Like we remember, like we, we brought Rosa Dendrum here to the Oaks thinking that she couldn't get beat and 
enabled Peter, you know. So, and, and the, the, a lot of rain came on the ground, got soft. But like, could you believe that you'd run into enabled? You know what I mean? You know. So, and then, you know. So it's just incredible, really, Lydia. Where are we going to see this very important horse next? Yeah, I don't know. Listen, obviously he would have a core option, but the lads always make those decisions. We tell them in seven to ten days how they are. They'll talk to Ryan and they'll talk between themselves, and then they'll decide what they want to do. Um, the great thing he came out of Newmarket, brilliant. So if he comes out today as well, like he'll, he'll um, listen, it should plan itself. But like to give the horse a few days. But obviously the core would be a, 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 an obvious choice for him. Um, but we'll uh, see what how the horse is and what the lads want to do. In the long term, might he have international targets? I'd say so, Lydia. He's gonna this horse's gonna love. He's gonna love travelling, you know. And and he's a, he's a pure a mile and a quarter, mile and a half horse, you know. And and the guineas would have been fine if the things fell yeah. for him. But it, like, and it might be a blessing in disguise that it didn't, because if he did, we'd been waiting on the ledger, and you know what I mean. So he, he's free of all that now. You know, so he's a he's a he's, he's a, free he's, of the triple crown. He, he's free of all those shackles. You know what I mean? You know, so he can he can do and the lads can do whatever they want with him now. Okay. Um, and finally, for you, nine derbies. I mean, that's a tremendous achievement. Yeah, sure. It? For me and Amory and all, I look at the four lads like Joseph, Dunnick, Sarah, and Anna. Like it's incredible. Like we, like they've never seen anything else, and we've all we've always since we were so lucky since we started training this is we to have these type of horses that we could compete in these races and everyone knows how it is how important it is um, every day they run and each today and like it's um it's, it's a great privilege for us really uh, to be involved with the horse and and the lads and to to be involved in everybody really it's it's that's what's really a, a privilege for us uh, lydia well congratulations Aidan. you've done it again really well done i'm really looking forward to seeing this horse race for the rest of the season well done yeah thanks lydia thank appreciate you. it thank you lydia thank you it's a third derby for Ryan Moore on August Rodan. And you were saying beforehand that the horse would have to feel very different to the 2000 Guineas. Clearly he was. Was that apparent straight away? Yeah, straight away he was in a, in a very good rhythm. He, was, he felt in a very good place going to the start. And he was very smooth. I always felt in control of the race. He got there going easy. Um, still, still a little bit uh, immature when he got to the front. But he was when, when I asked him, he found plenty inside the last fire. I'd be very happy with him. I think, and people are saying he won on bad ground last year and put ground in the guineas in his favour, but he's got, he's got a beautiful action. He's a lovely moving horse, and we always thought he'd want nice ground. And um, Aidan always had a lot of belief in the horse, and we were just, even last week, we were looking at um, a Preakness with Sunday Silence won it, and just grand uh, sire. And the markings are exactly the same, so um, yeah, we, we, we think he's got huge potential. Talk me through what you were thinking in the straight as you were seeing the race develop ahead of you, particularly the, when the runner-up King, runner King of Steel went on. I thought I had the race won as soon as I crossed the road, really, and um, I was a bit worried about getting hit in the front as early as I was going to. And, and the second horse kicked, and my horse just shut down a little bit, but when I asked him and we had to go win his race, he, he found plenty then. And is this his trip? Is he, a, is he a mile and a half horse or is there more versatility to him? Given we saw him in a Guinness, you'd imagine there is. Yeah, look, he, he got the trip very well, but he was very comfortable throughout the race. It probably wasn't the strongest run derby, um, didn't ride like it. And he, he felt like he was doing it easy through his, through his speed and his class. I, I'd say he'd be adaptable, but he obviously gets the trip fine. Instinctively, how do you feel he compares to your previous derby winners, Workforce, Rule of the World? I look, look um, I mean, in terms of, you know, give me an idea of how he differs, if you know, I'm not asking you to rank them. Yeah, he, he, he always felt like he was going beautiful, you know, I think this quicker ground was was a big help to him. Um, he's, you know, like, workforce won half the track, you know, um, rule of the world, it was, it was a title ding dong. This horse, he was giving a similar fall to workforce in the way he went through the race and was always comfortable, so it's delightful. And finally, the contingency plans, the things that have had to be done in preparation to actually get this race off. Can you give us from your perspective, the jockey's perspective, what you were told about that and how it went from your perspective? Uh, to be fair, I think um, Andrew Cooper and his team and Jockey Club race courses and the BHA, they've been on top of it and it seems to have, I don't know what's happened, but it seems to have gone off without a hitch and... Um, and uh, I think that's a very good sign. I suspect you're very grateful for that as yeah. well. Thank you. Many congratulations, Ryan. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.